we begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
to God with the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was laying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called out, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for, Lord, for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the member of Christ, members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never! Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one day one body with her, 
for it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were brought, bought by a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite, and whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael said in reply, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When your favorite football team makes it to the playoffs and allows an NFL record four touchdowns in the first quarter, I mean, who does that? One starts to think, about other things in life. Besides weighing whether to make an out loud vow to never watch another football game in my life that could come back to haunt me, I found myself thinking about baseball. True statement. As I started to work on the sermon, I simply turned off the TV. I've probably mentioned before that one of my all time favorite sports movies if not of all movies, is The Field of Dreams. There are so many memorable lines from that movie that I have found particularly insightful in living out the call to faith. In one scene, assuming many of you have seen the movie, and if you haven't, put it on your list. In one scene, the characters played by Kevin Costner and James Earl Jones visit Dr. Archibald Graham played by actor Burt Lancaster. This baseball player only got to play a half an inning in the outfield for his entire major league career. He never got to bat. The memorable line that he utters in recounting his baseball career is this, you know, we just don't recognize the most significant moments of our lives while they are happening. Back then, I thought, well, there'll be other days. I didn't realize that that was the only day. We do not often know, understand, or see the many significant moments when they are unfolding in our lives. In other words, it's only after the fact that we sometimes realize how impactful a moment of our lives has been. 
Now, occasionally such moments come to us at an appointed time that we look toward, like the obvious birth of a child, or a marriage, or graduation. But there are also other moments in our lives that come unbidden and unrecognized that end up being a turning point for our entire living. In this church season of Epiphany now, as we explore the scripture text of how this baby born in a manger is going to be different from any other individual that walked this earth, for the next two weeks, we encounter stories of the call to discipleship as Jesus encounters regular folks during their regular life activities, but yet have an encounter with the Messiah that would prove to be one of the most distinguishing moments, if not the most distinguishing moment, of their lives. Today we hear about Philip and Nathaniel. Next week we hear about all the fishermen brothers. So for these two Sundays, I would like to take a look at our call to follow as we hear about the call to follow Jesus for these inner disciples. Whether they were actively looking for the Messiah among them, as perhaps maybe some of them were, or perhaps maybe they were just about their day-to-day -day business of living out their vocation and lives, like perhaps the disciple Peter was, before a call of Christ comes to them from the lips of Jesus himself and intersects with their living, and they are called to follow. In these stories we read about, in almost every single case, their decision to respond is immediate. I don't know about you, but I haven't had many moments of life in general where I automatically knew what I was going to decide in a particular moment that would seem to be a big one for one's life direction, let alone such experiences when it comes to life in faith. Certainly for Philip, Nathaniel, Andrew, Simon, James, and John, they would have looked back at these moments of the call to follow me as profound moments of their lives. So as we encounter these call texts, if you will, here in January 2021, as we live in a world trying to move out of a raging pandemic with a rollout of vaccinations, as citizens of a country that is seeking to have a transition of government and seeking somehow to live in a world in which we know that we have some significant and great divides, but yet are called to coexist with one another, how does a call to follow Jesus make a difference in our daily living today? It's not easy sometimes to listen to the nudges of the Holy Spirit that seeks to direct us as people who have faith to live our lives into God's reign, let alone share the gospel in a way that helps to equip other people as well. It is much too easy sometimes to just be quiet, to just live my life, to just ignore the directive of the Spirit that may be calling me to do things, think or rethink things, and then act differently in the world around me. I once read an author who put it this way, I am not an atheist, I am a statheist, meaning I believe in God, okay, but the challenge to come and follow is something that I want to resist. I'd rather believe and stay where I am at in my own comfortable place than to step out into the unknown, step out into the risk, step out into faith to follow where we understand to be the call of Jesus. I think I'd rather be a statheist. To be a Christian in this world, it is much easier to sit back, it is much easier to take a seat in the bleachers and criticize and comment on the players in the actual field than to get off our behinds and challenge ourselves to put our best thinking, our best effort, our best discipleship into words and actions. I think it can be a universal temptation of us all to do that. But I cannot help, and I cannot help but wonder if there are times when Philip, Nathaniel, 
Andrew, James, John, Simon, and the rest thought, what in the world have I got myself into? How tempting is it to just go back to that sea and cast my net into the waters and fish for fish and quit worrying about all these other people. The challenge of faith is one we experience when our lives are at differing crossroads. How do we decide to act in faith, or simply, if you will, stay in faith? If you're like me, my temptation is to wait sometimes until more facts are in, so to speak. Now, sometimes waiting for more facts to be in before reacting is a very positive thing, especially in our world of knee-jerk social media and quick judgments. Rather, I am speaking about the situation of life in which there are already many knowns, and we still say, I think I want to wait for more and more direction. In other words, we can sometimes turn that waiting into an excuse to simply stay put literally in our faith life, and figuratively in our spiritual growth. The call to act in faith is probably both at the same time universal and unique to each of us. Some people have awakenings or stirrings or flashes of insight in a moment that lead and sometimes compel them to act. Many times, many of us do not have such experiences, or if we do, maybe we seek to push them aside. How do we not become a statheist? In our Old Testament lesson today, Samuel heard a direct voice from God to follow. In our gospel text, we heard about Jesus' call to Philip and Nathaniel. We may not have such experiences. However, we each still are called. How do we hear the call that beckons us to make different decisions or approaches to things in an unusual but a faith-filled way. We believe that God is at work in this world. We believe God does accompany us in this journey of faith. We believe God travels with us through the mountaintops of our life experiences and through the valleys of death. We recognize that, and we strive to believe in that, and we also take comfort in this. But we also know that God calls us to sometimes step out of our comfortable zones and to make decisions that speak to God's gospel truth. What in your life? What in your day-to-day -day living? What situation do you currently find yourself in? What challenges are you facing? What relationship dynamics are you in the midst of in which the Holy Spirit and which Jesus, and which God, may be calling you to decide, to act, to stand down, to speak up, or to change in ways that maybe are not your first impulse. Perhaps there are ways and directions that encourage us, and maybe even compel us, to act in faith. It can be scary. It can be intimidating to give ourselves a thumbs up to act into the unknown because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Those situations that come at us are unique to our own day-to-day -day living. So the question today is not, can anything good come out of Nazareth or wherever place we want to label as less than worthy? Instead, the question is, what good can be, could be, coming out of me as a person of faith. Because just maybe, just maybe, we will see greater things than these. Amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of our governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. This week, we pray for President-elect Joe Biden and for a peaceful transition of leadership in our country. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are impris imprisoned or homebound, and those struggling from this pandemic in any way, that God console all who suffer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, those watching at home, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may God, the Creator, strengthen you, Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.